Um, the latest on Dan Duquette is as of this moment, he is not going to be president of the Jays next season. Uh, reports that the Orioles were asking for a very stiff price compensation-wise. Obviously, we've talked about it on the show for the last little bit. One of the guys being thrown around is Jeff Hoffman, who the Blue Jays selected with the ninth overall pick last year. Uh, we're now pleased to be joined by uh, a man who was his pitching coach at East Carolina University. Go Pirates. Uh, Dan Roselle joining us. Dan, welcome to Tim and Sid. How you doing? Uh, doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, no, no trouble, no trouble. All right, tell me, what's the ceiling on this kid? Because the conversation in this market, Dan, has been, well, you know, Blue Jay fans are getting riled up for a kid they've never seen. How good can this kid be? I'll ask you. Well, you know, I think that's always the case when you take a, a kid in the first round and all you've seen him is high school or you've seen him in college. You, you just don't know until you get him there. But, you know, I would think uh, I've coached a, a lot of really good pitchers uh, in, in my coaching career, and I felt all along that uh, Jeff, is, he's got the capability of being a big league number one. Wow. All right. So how, how did he react to the Tommy John? I mean, that was a hell of a moment for him right before the draft to have that happen, obviously. But how, how did he react to it? And, and in, your, in any recent conversations, how, how is he doing right now? Oh, well, I tell you, he, he reacted way better than I did. So now whether he put on a good, good show and he was every bit a good actor, um, he, was, he was great about the process. You know, I think uh, you know, one of the biggest things as a, as a coach, you know, we, get, we always get judged on wins or losses, but – you know, I think uh, when when guys go into coaching and you have passion for the game, you love the game, you go much deeper than that. And guys getting hurt, uh, that just devastates, you know, any athletic trainer and pitching coach. And, you know, it uh, it crushed me. Uh, Jeff Jeff's kind of took it in stride and said, you know what, this had, you know, it was just something that happened. I can work through this. You know, this is not something that hasn't happened to, you know, other pitchers in the past and they couldn't overcome this. So he – like I said, he took it in stride better than anybody I think, uh, you know, I've had did. And he just said, no, this gives me an opportunity to work even harder and do the rehab things and, uh, and see how I can make this better. So yeah, that's, that, that was a, a very mature approach by him. Jeff Hoffman's college pitching coach, Dan Roselle, joining us here on Tim and Sid. Uh, Jeff Hoffman's name obviously was thrown around a lot. The Dan Duquette story uh, name kind of surfaced uh, middle to late last week. Now, Dan, allow me to play devil's advocate here because you said he has a potential to be a number one guy. Some people might be listening or watching this and saying, well, I mean, you know, he's what else he's going to say? He's clearly on Team Hoffman. He likes <laughs> he likes the kid. He coached him in college. Yeah, yeah, he's not yeah. going to come on Toronto radio and say he doesn't have number one stuff. So how how, how would you react to that point? Well, listen, you know, I've had, I've had some other guys that could really pitch and, you know, Chris sale pitch for me. And I think anybody who's anybody that knows baseball, you know, three-time all-star pitcher. And, you know, people were asking for comparisons last year. And even in the, in the past, you know, area scouts and GMs and people, and they knew I had Chris sale back when I was at Florida Gulf coast. And, you know, they asked the, the same question, like, well, how does he compare, you know, the, the competitiveness, the, the kind of, you know that there's a there's a difference in kids that you can you can tell you know there's there's not that many big leaguers out there you know we coach you know we're sitting here coaching our athletes there's 35 guys on the field you know on our team and you know big leaguers are easy to spot and Jeff he had the work ethic that it takes and the desire the passion but then there's the physical tools too that you know that other people just don't have you know you don't teach a fastball you just can't teach it you know he he was able to run it up there 98, 99 miles per hour. And then you put those two things together where there's work ethic and there's, there's the discipline that it takes involved, you know, then, yeah, he did get hurt, but all of those things were there beforehand. And, you know, you could, you could just pick that out within the, the guys that are the best of the best because you don't have them very often. You know, I don't know, you know, you, I've sit here and coached and, I've been blessed to have, you know, the Chris Sales of the world. And, you know, we had one here in 2011, Seth Manis, that's in the big leagues for the Cardinals that's pitching in the bullpen, you know, but they they just don't come along very often. So, you know, it when you see it and to anybody that, you know, Hey, I am a, I am a Hoffman fan only because he was a hard worker, not because he was a ninth overall draft pick by the Jays, because, you know, I had to put my life in his hands, you know, for, you know, to feed my kids and to make sure I kept my job. And you know what? He, I would fully entrust anything I had into him. And when the Jays came asking, hey, even though he was hurt, do you, do you believe in what he does and, and how hard he works? And 
it was an easy yes, sir. You, you guys will be, you will be tickled to death to have him. You know, he's gonna he's gonna make you really happy one day. So Dan, final question: If if you think this kid Hoffman was dealt for an executive, that w- <laughs> that would horrify you. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I don't think anything would horrify me because you know what? At the end of the day, it's a business. So I understand it. You know, I reached out to Jeff and. Honestly, I reached out to Jeff because of the of the of the Norris story, Daniel Norris, you know, that was done in Yahoo and in the van story. You know, I hadn't talked to Jeff in a good week and I saw there was a story on Norris. I reached out to him kind of goofing around. And then I heard about, you know, the whole getting traded. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I think the only thing I ever get horrified for is that, you know, our guys come from it being a game. You know, college baseball, it's a game. It's it's no business to it other than, you know, how you need to work to to approach it so you can do this as a profession later on. So, you know, it I think, you know, it's hitting home to Jeff a little bit more now that hey, you know, I I can only control what I can control, which is going out and doing my rehab and getting better and getting healthy. But at the end of the day, you know, it this is a business and, and I'm a employee and, you know, things can happen. I could get traded, you know. He's not supposed to learn that lesson yet, but, you know, there was another guy that, uh, you know, the NC State kid, um, oh gosh, Turner, you know, he just got traded not too long ago with the uh, with the Padres. So, you know, it seems like these things are happening more and more nowadays. Dan, I know, uh, you know, the exhibition season is weeks away. The conference schedule is just around the corner. We've been going back and forth. We, uh, You have been very accommodating. We appreciate your time because there's a lot of Jay fans who have read that story, but they, they, they need a different a different – level of knowledge on the kid and hopefully you've given some of that so we appreciate it all the best to you guys this season at east carolina let's uh, let's do this again soon thank you oh thank you very much and you know best of luck to the jays